Have you ever formed an opinion about someone based only on their appearance, based on how they looked or how they spoke? We all do it. Sometimes we do it even without being aware. If you just completed the job selection activity, we showed you CVs from four different people and asked you to rank them in order of suitability for the job at the engineering firm. Two of the CVs were quite strong, with better work history and educational qualifications, and two were quite weak. Two also came from male applicants and two came from female applicants. If you take a look at the results of the poll, the more that people ranked applicant one higher than applicant two, suggests that the person's gender influenced the rankings because both had the same strong job history and educational background. If applicant three was ranked higher than applicant two, then gender really played a strong part in the rankings. Applicant three was a man, but his job history and education were really not as strong as the woman described in applicant two's CV. This sort of thing is not limited to the job selection context. Almost in the first few seconds of meeting someone new, we form judgments about that person based on their appearance and how they conduct themselves. This prejudgment of the other person can sometimes be positive. For example, if the other person is familiar to us, it's more likely that our prejudgment of them will be positive. However, our prejudgment of people can sometimes be negative. Prejudice refers to the prejudgment or initial opinion we form about someone before we've had a chance to properly get to know them. Prejudice literally means prejudgment, and the word comes from the Latin prejudice, prejudgment. In social psychology, prejudice refers to the unfavourable attitudes that people have toward a social group and its members. It's likely that most of you are able to think of a time when you felt as though you were judged unfairly by others, when you were judged negatively on the basis of something other than the quality of your character. This could have been the way you looked, your accent, where you lived, your tattoos, your body shape and so on. It's not a great feeling. Many social psychologists are interested in answering the question of why. Why are people prejudiced? Knowing the factors that are associated with prejudice would enable us to work out a way to reduce prejudice in our society. This is a big social justice mission for many social psychologists. We'll be focusing on sexism and racism because these are the two isms that have attracted the most research attention over the years. Also, as Perry and colleagues' 2012 research shows, people living with chronic stress from their experience of sexism and racism have been found to be more at risk of taking their own lives. We'll talk about some of the theories of prejudice focusing on gender and race stereotyping, but these theories are translatable to other prejudices. Then we'll talk about the consequences of discrimination for the victims themselves. We'll look at some fairly mind-bending research that shows how our preconceptions and assumptions about people can actually constrain the way they feel and behave, and ironically, can actually influence them to become the kinds of people that we perceive them to be.